guys and welcome back to the off grid garage here in sunny hot australia it is actually not so sunny and not so hot anymore hmm? oh lunch ah see now after lunch it is actually sunny outside <laughs> We're getting some power into the batteries. I'm not doing too bad today. 37%, 61.5 amps outside. Yeah, yeah, I need to mention the 0.5 amps as well. So we are really tight. And here the SPAT calibration center is doing well as well. 27% and 4.1 amps outside. This is charging our 304 amp hour eel battery. Yeah, that's the vertical eel battery case charging from this um, pull fan system here well at the moment it's the um, I call it the afternoon dip there's one tree in the way and we get the shade but you can see there's already the Sun again and the Sun will move over the panels in the afternoon again gives us an afternoon hump after the dip and yesterday I made uh, three and a half kilowatt hours from the system into this battery so it's not too bad actually I know if you're almost in summer, three and a half kilowatt hours doesn't sound much, right? But remember, when you're in winter time, three and a half kilowatt hours is the world. Okay, and this morning I got up early and started working on our uh, network cabinet. I have taped up all the holes and openings in the case and put this plaque gap sealer behind it. So this one is drying right now. I also did the same at the back of the case. And of course here under the bottom as well. Yeah, and then I harvested one of the fans out of the old switchboard we had installed here on the power wall. It was the first installation we had and it had the inverter and all the MPPTs inside. It was hanging there on the power wall and the 3 kVA Phoenix inverter was inside. And then the family grew and needed more space. Yeah, and since then the old switchboard sits here in the garage for further use. But I've harvested one of the fans. It's now in the top of the case here. I don't know, why do I need to sneeze when I make videos? Seems to be a video allergy or something. I've ordered also a 12 volt 5 amp uh, PWM controller for this fan. So we can connect it to our 12 volt power supply and then run the fan depending on the internal temperature. This is what you wanted, right? A fan. I still have to close this gap here at the top though. So if this all works out with the gap sealer here, I will do the same here as well. And I already got this air filter strip here, which we will put down here in this gap. I probably only put some screws in here and clamp this and just clamp this behind the screws so I can take it out at any point of time and wash it out, clean it and then put it back in. So hopefully this will give us clean air inside the cabinet. Of course, all these lids here, they are not airtight either. Neither is the front door here. There are small gaps and air will be sucked in there as well. Oh, we will see. I'm sure there will be a version 1.1 at some stage or something. And we keep modifying this network cabinet as well. Okay, so in today's video, we want to do some cabling. We want to connect all these um, buck converters, maybe connect it to our power supply and see if all the buck converters actually work, if they deliver the correct voltage. And as you suggested, I've also printed an end cap for these solar rails. Um, it goes this way, yes. Just clips in like this. Took me two attempts to make one. It's a bit hard to measure all this here and get these little standoffs here in the right position. But now they should also work here on this. Can't reach it. I can't reach it. Oh yeah, here we go. So, it looks much better. Uh, the second one is still printing. It, it takes only half an hour though to print this one. And I've just removed one of the screws here of the um, fuse block. And these ring lugs, they fit actually perfectly in here. Yep, there's definitely enough space with the lid on. I very much like this idea. Okay, first one done. I have now connected the two boost converters to the fuse block. And once we are done cabling, we will use some split loom. It's like a conduit which has a slot in it. But this will be one of the last steps then to organize all the cables. As always guys, I link all these devices here, the fuse block, the crimper, as well as the split loom down under the video and on my website as well. 
You won't believe how many emails I'm getting where people are asking, Andy, you have shown this and this tool in your video, where can I get it? And putting this all on my website, I can just send them a link and say, well, there it is. This is all my stuff. So everything we have ever used here in the Offcut Garage, all the parts, all the bits, tools, accessories, parts, cables, everything, batteries, everything we have used is on our website. But I have to mention it again and again. There are a lot of new subscribers on the channel, so they don't know. And in my infinite wisdom, I have already soldered these XT60 connectors on the boost converters. Because I thought it's actually a good idea to have a connection between the boost converter and the actual device we are supplying power to. But then, honestly, it doesn't make sense because all these devices, the PoE switch, the PoE switch, the network router and the NAC computer, they have already plugs on the back. They all use these round, um, what is it? Ah, it's in Chinese, okay. Well, you've, you've seen these round connectors here. This is standard. I will actually unsolder these XT60 connectors again, and then we extend these cables here directly to the point where our device is mounted and solder them directly to one of these round connectors. And then it plugs into the device. If I need to unplug anything, I can just unplug it there. Why would you have another connection in between? You know, all these parts were already here and I just started soldering these XT60 connectors, but now it doesn't make sense. So control Z, undo everything and start again. Well, the last unexpected video was a bit of a screw up. This was supposed to be only for my members of the channel here. And I wanted to share what is in these boxes to let them know before I show this on the channel. But for some reason, well, when you upload a video to YouTube, it is set to public by default. And I remember I've set it to members only but I think I have forgotten to click the save button underneath because usually everything is public. It was the first time I was making a members only video, but yeah, I screwed up. So this video actually got public and has now like 8,000 views or something. So um, 8,000 people already know what's in these boxes. <laughs> but hey, don't you dare tell anyone. So, and here I got the mounting plate of the Intel NAC computer and the mini computer has these special screws in the back which are standing up a little bit and they poke through these holes here and then you slide it down into these slots. So you can actually take off the NAC computer from this mounting plate here without any tools or screws or anything. When the computer is mounted on this plate, the power supply goes in here on the top left. There's our power supply in this corner. So we don't need to extend this cable here at all. We just put this round connector in, which then plugs in directly to the Intel NAC. Okay, let me have a look if this is actually a good solder. Yeah, it is. It is nice. Okay, and now we put this heat shrink over the top. We need to cut off this end piece here of this metal. This heat shrink is too much. I'll leave the positive on. Yeah, they are not touching. There's the cable in between, but still. It is. Let me see if this works actually. Oh yeah, it does. It does work. Oh, look at this. Yes, of course. I've got Miss Piggy on my website as well. In pink. Well, I must say, this is not too bad, actually. Yeah, definitely long enough. For now, that's fine. Okay, so we need to... This is 48 volt. This is the PoE switch. Okay, NAC computer. PoE switch. Somewhere over here, maybe. So I can get all the network cables from the top and can see the lights from the front. See, this is the reason why I don't want any any shelves or something because I cannot see where the cables are plugged in and I cannot see the lights correctly. But if it's mounted vertically inside the box, I can see both the cables and the lights. Because um, someone in the comments said, well, these um, cabinets, they are not really designed to mount things vertically. They are more for the horizontal mounting thing. Of course, that's why I modify it to make it a vertical network box. Ah, the second end cap printed actually. Can't reach it. We have to do this later. <sighs> oh, yes. 
that's good. So I've mounted the PoE switch directly underneath the mini computer. And this makes really good use of the space now. And the PoE switch mounts basically upside down. Now you can see the two mounting points, which I originally thought it's a bad thing, but it's actually good. Because now all the cables, they can come directly from the back, go behind the back plate and then go wherever they need to go. And it's a clean installation. Look at this, nice. And also the power supply of the PoE switch is on this side here. So we just can put the uh, round connector on, on these cables and then we are done. We don't need to extend these cables at all. This is all very convenient. Okay, what do we have here? 15, 20, 10, 5. 5 amps. 5 amps for our 19 volt buck converter and 10 amps. It doesn't really matter. I could use another 5 amp here for the 48 volt as well. <laughs> Again, a sneezer while I'm filming. What's going on? Okay, then negative and positive. So let's see how much current they are actually pulling. When I connect the power supply, three, two, one. Bit of a spike, but nothing serious. Then let's measure the 48 volt back converter. 48.3 volts. 19 volts makes 19 makes 19.23 volts. Perfect. Okay, we're still at 23 milliamps and let's connect the PoE switch and see how much power this actually pulls. Okay, it's in and we are now at 92. Ah, now it goes down, it has booted up. 60 milliamps standby. All right, PoE switch mounted and running. Yoo-hoo, it works. So and if we pull one of the fuses, for example, the 48 volt one, we get a red LED here telling us the fuse has blown. This is actually a nice feature of this fuse block. Yeah, once we mount the actual network switch here inside this metal cabinet, we could see some problems with the Wi-Fi, but I don't expect it actually because well, this Wi-Fi here, I can still get far, far in the backyard. Probably 100 meters from here, I still have Wi-Fi connection to the garage. And this whole building here is a Faraday cage already. I may not have this network connection in the backyard anymore, but that's fine. Because we already, I already have bought another Wavelink outdoor access point extender. I can only highly recommend these ones here. I've got one on top of the house. Got one there on top of the house. And this reaches every bit of my 10 acre block here. When I come around the corner down the road, the mobile phone already picks up the Wi-Fi and connects and I'm not even at home. So this will be a second one we can mount here somewhere in the garden. And then we can set this up as an access point range extender. I had this TP link outside access point here for a couple of years on top of the house. You can see the plastic is really yellowish and the throughput was not really great anymore. So I thought before spending another 200 bucks on a TP-Link, I'll try the Chinese Wavelink here. And this is on top of the house now for uh, a bit over a year, actually. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah, it must, must be in March or something last year. So this is on top of the house for 15 months. There's a 24 volt PoE injector included and it never missed a beat. 5 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, perfect. So if we lose a bit of signal here from the Wi-Fi from this access point here, when we mount this inside the metal box here, that's totally fine. As long as all the devices here inside the garage are still connecting and the car still connects to download over the air updates, that is all I need it for. Everything else is covered by the access point on top of the house. <laughs> Okay, I have got such an Intel NAC computer here at the moment. This is not the one which goes into the box. This is a larger one. The Home Assistant server runs on a smaller NAC computer, which obviously uses less power than as well. And the Home Assistant OS is far more efficient than Windows 11. But just for the sake of fun, let's plug this one in and see how much power it actually pulls. Okay, unfortunately, this one doesn't pull any power because the connector does not fit into this socket. The pin of these devices is slightly larger than the standard pin and I cannot get this plug in at all here. 
Shit. So guys, we have to wait until the next video to find out how much power actually the NAC computer pulls from this converter and from our 12 volt power supply. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here for all these beautiful people out there who are donating to the channel, buying me a beer. Oh no, it's called SPAT. Hey, you won't, you won't believe how many emails I'm getting a week where people send me questions and whatever. And they also ask, hey Andy, I always wanted to ask the question, what actually does SPAT mean? Well, here it is. There's your solution. <laughs> well, welcome to the channel. You must be new, right? And also thank you to everyone who is leaving comments and liking the videos. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. All your support is very much appreciated and makes these videos possible. Okay guys, until the next video when we actually mount this beast here on this shelf up there in the roof space. And we have to pull some cables here. I've got already some cable duct here. Conduit going up there, network back to the computer, back to the Raspberry. everything else is Wi-Fi. Should be fine, but this will be something for tomorrow. Until then guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then, bye bye. And now keeping a box of all the old power supplies would finally pay off. Yes. That's the one. Okay, no cliffhanger. Here's the test. I have to find... Okay, it goes in. Okay, and this is the standby of the machine and I turn it on right now. It's booting up 1.3, 1.4, 1 amp. They are coming with a 4.7 amp power supply. Oh, 4.3 we have seen. Woo. Yeah, I think the machine has booted up now. The uh, no hard drive activity anymore. I think it's waiting in the login mask now. So it's around 1.5 amps at 12 volts. And as I said, the home assistant server is actually a bit smaller than this one here. It has only one SSD hard drive. This one has two and it's all in total a smaller machine. I think this is an i5. The other one is an i3. Ah, now it has booted up. Look at this. 0.5 of an amp. Yeah, and this is what I'm expecting from the other machine as well. Half an amp, that's all. Well, you can see there's no cliffhanger in the off-grid garage. Well, at least not today.